Have you ever been sitting watching season 3 episode 8 of NBC's Hannibal and you thought to yourself, man, I wish I was Frederick Chilton being fed a meal by Hannibal Lecter. Well, today's your lucky day, because today I am Hannibal Lecter and you're still Frederick Chilton and I'm going to be teaching you how to make sanguinaccio dolce without the sang. I'm, I'm sorry Italian people, I don't know how to say that. Sangue. Yeah, without that. <laughs> So one thing that you should know about me is that I love cooking and baking and all things making food. Um, however, this recipe is not mine. I will be linking the amazing person who made this recipe, um, or at least the recipe I'm using, in the description below. Um, if you want to follow along with their recipe while you watch this video, good on you. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it. So the ingredients that you will need to create this recipe, I'm making this recipe for four. Uh, four servings. Um, so you will need one and one-third cup of milk, uh, preferably whole milk, but any percentage will do. One and one-third cinnamon stick, um, however I'm just going to use one cinnamon stick. Um, two-thirds of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, two-thirds of a cup of granulated sugar, four tablespoons of all-purpose flour, half a cup of chopped good quality chocolate. Um, by good quality they mean at least 70% pure chocolate. I'm actually going to be using 100% cocoa um, from the Granada Chocolate Factory. Um, that will probably make it a little less sweet, a little more bitter, um, but I'm fine with that. But use whichever ch type of chocolate you want to make. Use whichever one you think will work best for your recipe. You will also need one and one third teaspoons of vanilla extract. Um, once again, this recipe has no blood in it unlike the Hannibal Lecter recipe because I I don't want to eat that. Uh, if you do, <laughs> this video is not for you. I will be using no blood in my recipe. However, I'm sure it's going to turn out great. Um, so the first step that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting up the oranges um, because in NBC's Hannibal um, he serves sanguinaccio dolce. I'm <laughs> I'm butchering the pronunciation, I know, uh, but he served it out of an orange peel. Um, and I'm going to be doing that first because I have no idea how long this is going to take. I'm doing it now um, just to get it out of the way. Um, you can do it whenever it serves you. Um, I'm just doing this so I don't have to worry about it later. So today I have two large oranges. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting these in half and then taking the oranges out of the orange peel uh, so that we have just the peel left over for us to serve our cool, wonderful dessert in. Whoa! So I have my cutting board already here, and we're going to start, like I said, by first of all peeling the, the little orange peel off the oranges, because we don't want to eat those actually. Um, <laughs> and we're going to start by cutting these in half. I'm cutting them in half lengthwise. Um, honestly, I assume you would do the same. <laughs> um, but if you want to cut them... I guess there's not really a length side to an orange because it's a sphere, more or less. But that's, <laughs> that's not the issue today. Um, so I've cut this in half. You see, we have two beautiful halves of an orange here. These um, are such nice oranges, I feel like they could be like orange models, if that's a thing. Um, but we're gonna... Th but then we're going to take our knife and very carefully I don't assume there are any children watching this video, but if there are, don't do this without parental supervision, please. Um, very carefully cut the inside of the orange um, and cut it out. So by putting your knife very carefully in between the orange and the peel, um, and try not to pierce the skin, because then our wonderful chocolate delight will come gushing at the sides. And, you know, as, as, as much Hannibal vibes as that gives me to say, um, we actually don't want that <laughs> with, with our... We, we would like our orange to stay intact so that it actually works like a bowl as it's intended to. You might have to put your finger in like I'm doing here to, once you've, you know, cut it out with your knife, just to work the excess orange the excess orange <laughs> to work the <laughs> to work the orange from around the peel. Um, feel free to go back in with, with your knife 
if you have to, just to cut that wonderful fleshy part of the orange out. I'm mangling this orange inside. I really am. <laughs> um, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, this, the orange doesn't have to look pretty when it comes out because that's, that's not the intention. See, here's, here's my wonderful, beautiful orange. Um, this is a pretty messy process, so you might want to have a little towel or something standing by for you to clean up any mess that you make, which I do. I do have a towel standing by. Um, I don't know if you could see that in the background, um, but I'm aware that this is very messy. Um, so, because it's messy, you might not want to wear a white dress shirt like I am. Um, but the fit is more important <laughs> than, than keeping my, my, this shirt clean. I gotta be presentable for all my wonderful YouTube viewers. Also feel free to grab a spoon and just, if, if there, you know, there's still any orange left in here, just spoon it out. Because you want most of the orange flesh out of the peel so that you aren't really getting little orange bits in your sanguinaccio dolce because I keep <laughs> really messing up the pronunciation. You just don't want orange in it, okay? Um, the peel will give you enough citrus flavor. If you have your orange mostly intact like I do, you can just put this on a plate and set it aside so that you can have the actual orange flesh later because it's very yummy and it's good calcium. Vitamin C. Oranges have vitamin C, not calcium. I knew this. I know this. So you're going to repeat this process with all of your orange halves. I will not be showing you all of that on camera, um, but feel free to pause the video if you're doing this along, alongside me. Continue your orange slicing because it is a very crucial part of this recipe. This one actually turned out really nicely. Um, the flesh more or less stayed intact. Um, but this is something where by your, by your fourth orange piece, or even earlier, like me, you'll have this wonderfully intact orange. The orange flesh is perfectly intact here. Um, I'm just gonna eat this later. Um, once I get that stem out of there, you'll see there's, there's no orange in there. So, my first one, not so nice, not so pretty. But, um, that will not heavily impact the flavor. So if yours turned out like my first one, not a problem. Don't even worry about it. I'm on to my second orange now. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, my hands are covered in orange juice. I didn't take the sticker off this one. I told you to take the stickers off. Don't make my mistake, please take the stickers off. Mmm! Maybe they're Florida oranges, that would make sense. I'm gonna drink some of the orange juice. Mmm, very tasty. Oh yeah, um, if you are a current subscriber to the channel and this is not your first video, um, I cut my hair. As you can see, if it is your first video, hello, I'm very happy to have you here. I'm hoping to make this series in the future. Hopefully I will be back um, with more Hannibal meals. Um, if you want to see more of that, like the video, comment, I don't know, subscribe. Tell me this is the kind of stuff you want to see, and I will be happy to oblige. Still cutting oranges. Oh, look at that. Nice and clean. So once you have your four little orange bowls, um, you're, we're just going to set those aside and then we'll get into actually making the sanguinaccio dolce without the sang. I still don't know how to say it. I take this opportunity now, um, as I'm going to do, clean up the mess you made with your oranges, um, clean off your cutting board because you will be needing it right now, immediately right after I say this. So I have all my measuring utensils and I have my chocolate and next we're going to be chopping up our half cup of chocolate. Uh, once again, 70% or more pure chocolate is preferred, however, use whatever you want. My 100% dark chocolate will not be for everybody, this, is, will be, this will end up being a very bitter chocolate. That's good, because I don't imagine blood to be very sweet. Yeah, your bowl here, just fill up your half cup. And you can be a little under. Um, you don't have to fill it exactly, you don't have to fill it all the way to the top. Just be around, around a half. Don't go over a half on 
under, under would be. If you're going to go over or under, go under. So now that I have my eh, just under a half cup of chocolate, we can actually get into creating the dish. So we're going to take our milk and our cinnamon stick and we're going to heat it on the stove until just before it simmers. So here's our one cup. Real nice thick milk. We love to see it, and we love to see it. Usually I would be doing this over the pot. Please do this over the pot. I'm just, I'm just trying to show you what I'm doing. So I'm not doing it over the pot, because my back would be doing And then you can see what I'm doing. And then our third cup. Look at that, very nice, very nice. Do -do 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 -do. Bam! So that's our milk. We're gonna get our cinnamon stick. I don't use cinnamon sticks often, so this is a little bit jammed in here. I have to cram it out. All right, and our singular cinnamon stick, which we have here. I'm gonna put that in. So we're gonna heat it until it's just about simmering. Um, shouldn't be too, too long. Make sure you keep an eye on it. Uh, you can stir it intermittently if you like. Make sure that the, see how the milk's doing. Get the cinnamon stick coated with milk. Uh, you don't need to though. The flavors will get simmered through anyways. But that option is there for you should you choose to take it. All right, so once your milk is right before the point of simmering, what you're gonna do, Bam, turn off the stove, remove it from heat. And then, with our fancy little set of thongs here, we're gonna stir around, make sure, no, don't get stuck. Then we're gonna take our little cinnamon stick and you know what we're gonna do with it? Bam, in the garbage, just discard it. Um, you don't need it anymore, we don't need it for the rest of the recipe. Um, if you want to keep it, I guess good for you, um, but for everyone else, discard it. You don't need it. Um, and then we're just going to leave our pot here. We're going to leave it aside, our, our little hot milk. We're going to leave our hot milk aside and we're going to move on. So our next step, we are going to be sifting in all of our dry ingredients. Um, if you don't have a sifter, um, if you have a, like a, a little tight strainer like this, that'll work just as well. Um, but yeah, we're going to be sifting, and it's important that you're sifting this in because if there are any lumps, you really won't be able to get them out later. So you're, we're trying to minimize the amount of lumps. So I got my bowl here. I'll put my sifter right up there for now. Uh, pretend that stayed. And first up, we have our cocoa powder. So we're going to get two-thirds of this bad boy. Um, if your cocoa powder is as, as tough as mine is, Uh, you may need a knife to loosen it and get it out. We're not even at a third cup yet, and I've already had to use my knife twice. This is crazy. We live in a society, guys. So, uh, you've got your first third of a cup. I don't have two thirds of a cup of things. Like, I don't have a two third cup measurement. So I'm just using a one third, and I'll do two of those. So here's the first one. Then we're gonna shake it. We're gonna shake it to sift it. Um, Cause this is a pro sifting. This is a pro sifting YouTube channel. Um, we appreciate all the work that sifters do for us to make our lives easier and to make our sanguinaccio dolce, dolce, sanguinaccio dolce, I don't know how to say it still, um, but to make it less lumpy. That's what I was looking for. It took me a real long time to think of it. Ah. This might take a while, so here's a compilation a time lapse, as one might say, of me just sifting. I'm just standing here, sifting. That's all I'm doing. You're not missing out on much. Don't worry, but you should be doing this. Don't forget to sift. Sifting is important.
That is our first sifting job done. Next, we're going to sift in our two-thirds cup of granulated sugar. Bam! Shout out my homie Red Cat. Come in clutch. The sifter is back. How you know you got the right amount of sugar. When you got that horrendous crunching. Oh, that went down so much nicer. That went down so much nicer. Like it's almost fully sifted. Oh my goodness. That went down so much nicer. Oh. Oh, sugar. Sugar, sugar. Honey, honey. Look at that. I didn't even need a time lapse for that. That's crazy. Friendship ended with cocoa powder. Red Path Sugar is my new best friend. I'm not sponsored by Red Path. I'm not. Um, oh, I hope that doesn't get me in some sort of legal trouble. Uh, lastly, we got our four tablespoons of flour going in the sifter one more time. This hopefully will be shorter because um, it's four tablespoons, not two thirds of a cup. Bam, that's second tablespoon. Third tablespoon. And fourth tablespoon. Check it out. Right. One more sifting job. Hopefully it goes as nicely as the sugar did. Oh, and it is. Oh, and it is. Oh, and it is. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Definitely my cocoa powder was the worst sifting job. Like, for my mental health. <laughs> it caused me physical pain. Red Path Sugar was the best because this last little bit is being a little, being a little, making me a little angry. Because <laughs> it's not, it's not going down. It's not going down, but it will. I will make it. Come on. Come on. Come on, flower. There we go. There we go. Look at that. All of our sifting is done. All right, so what we're going to do next, um, we're going to whisk in our hot milk. Um, Cause our hot milk is important, and it's it's finally coming back. Shout out my homie, hot milk. Not hot milk. Hot milk. M I L K. Not hot milk. That's a different website. Um, and avoid lumps. Okay, your 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 goal here: no lumps. Because if there are lumps, you will not be able to get them out later. Do a little milk at a time, okay? A little milk at a time. Make it a lot easier for you to avoid any lumps forming. And then once, you know, you kind of got it worked in a little bit, add the rest, and then keep whisking. Who are you going to call? Keep whisking. That didn't even make sense. Oh yeah, I have dogs, so if you hear any dog noises throughout this video. I see a lot of things that make me sound like Will. I, I, I look and behave in ways that, that may make you think that I'm Will Grant. But I promise you, for this video, I'm Hannibal Lecter, and I'm teaching you how to cook. Because you think Will knows how to cook? Absolutely not. However, what Will could teach you that I absolutely could not, anything to do with fish. I, I personally will not eat anything that comes out of the ocean. I just don't think it's swag. Uh, once your mixture is sufficiently whisked, um, you're going to pour it back into the pot. And then we're going to do some more whisking after that. Mmm. Delicious. If there's any stuff in the bottom here, get it out with a whisk so that if there's any lumps, 
you've got enough liquid in here to whisk it out. Um, then whisk it into the bowl. If you don't have a whisk, if you've gotten this far in the video without a whisk, you can use a fork. Forks are fine. Uh, you might have to put in some more work. But forks are great. Forks will not kill you. Not having a whisk is not the end of the world. Do I suggest you invest in a whisk? Yeah. Um, but for this video, it's not the end of the world. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be cons whisking this consistently over medium-low heat for four to eight minutes or until this starts to thicken. Um, but yes, I said whisk it constantly. You want to keep that whisk in there for the whole four to eight minutes that you're doing this, okay? All right, so once it starts thickening, um, you're going to take your, your chopped up chocolate, you're going to pour it in there. And you're going to whisk it until it's all melted and combined, okay? Remember, we don't want any, we don't want any clumps. We don't want this clumpy. We want this to be clump free. So whisk it well, whisk it good, whisk it like you know you should. Uh, if it's if it's like tough, as in like it's thick, uh, that's good. That's how it's supposed to be. Because it's it's chocolate. You're making you're making a big old nice chocolate thing you got going on here. So that's a good sign. You're doing well. Good for you. good job. Good for you. So once this is all smooth, okay, because remember, no lumps, you want no lumps, make sure, they're, make sure this is not lumpy, you want no lumps. Once this is all smooth, uh, you're going to remove it from heat, just turn your stove off, and then we're going to put some vanilla extract in there. So we are putting one and a third um, teaspoons of vanilla extract in here. Not too much vanilla extract, but a good amount. So that's one teaspoon, teaspoon. Did I say tablespoon? I meant teaspoon. And a third of a teaspoon. Very good, very nice. Uh, and then you're going to mix that in there. Mix it in well. Once again, this is smooth. You want it to be smooth. Smell, smelling really good by now. Um, this is smelling real nice. I know already this is going to be really, really good. Um, I'm also going to be putting in right now some red food coloring because even though there's no blood in it, I can pretend like there is by putting food coloring in. So this step's optional. Um, didn't mention it before because it's not in the ingredients. Um, if you don't want to do this, that's all good, that's great. You do you, but I am going to. I am hoping <laughs> it gives it a little bit of a red tinge. I don't know. This is chocolate. This is dark. I don't know how well that will turn out. But I'm going to try, okay? <laughs> Feel free to put in whatever if you want. If you got red food coloring, go for it. So we are pretty much at the end of our video here. Um, so while I let that cool for a bit before we put it, in our orange peels that we got from the beginning. Um, I just wanted to thank you if you got this far into the video. I would have been doing this myself alone in my kitchen, but um, this is something that I love and I want to share it with other people. You know, if you like Hannibal or if you just like making cool dishes, I know I do. Um, so if either of those apply to you and you watch this video, thank you so much. If you're just here to support me, thank you so much. Um, I want to make this a series. So if you like this and you want to see more of me recreating Hannibal Beals, make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, all the things that established YouTubers tell you to do, except I'm a small YouTuber and I would like you to do that to make me feel better. <laughs> I hope that people see this because this is something that I find enjoyable the love of cooking, as one might say. Um, 
And if I can encourage other people to pursue cooking, that is great. I have no formal um, experience in cooking. I have no formal training. Um, so I'm just a guy. So this is all stuff that, you know, you can either get at the grocery store or you have it in your house. Um, so I hope this is a good recipe and I hope that you enjoy the video. Now, that is hopefully cooled down enough. I don't know though, uh, but we are going to get this in our beautiful little oranges. Mm -mm -mm. Hot chocolate <laughs> in an orange. Yum yum, yum yum yum. So, oh! I'm just putting these in. Try to keep them upright um, because, you know, they will, if they tip over, the chocolate will fall out. And that's not what we want. We want the chocolate in the orange peel, not outside of the orange peel. Oh, Nelly. If you have something, I, I, I recommend just balancing the the oranges with each other, if that makes any sense, like uh, one orange kind of leaning on the other to kind of keep it upright. That's all I'm doing. Um, I'm just I'm just really pouring it in there because the chocolate is hot. It will make your um, orange peels a little flimsy, so. That's something to watch out for. Probably going to keep a closer eye on your orange peels to make sure that they don't fall over or spill or anything like that. Um, and you're probably going to want this to cool a little bit more before you serve it. However, don't wait too, too long. If you wait too long, then the it will not be as lustrous as you might want it. Oh, this is the wrong side. <laughs> um, it might not be as lustrous as you want it. So, let it cool a bit so you don't burn your mouth, but not too much. That you don't get the full sanguinaccio dolce experience without the blood. I think Hannibal Lecter would approve of this, of this meal, this creation, this food stuff, because I wouldn't really call this a meal. Don't eat this as a meal. Um, eat your four food groups. How many food groups are there? Four? I don't know. All four of my food groups are meat. Haha! <laughs> not human meat. I'm not a cannibal. If, you know, stuff's kind of sticking to your, your spoon or to the bottom of your pot, Feel free to just use another spoon. <laughs> I'm using my uh, my tablespoon, my measuring cup, to fix it. But um, you know, whatever you got, you can make it work. If you have a bit extra, a bit more than you have orange peels for, feel free to dip your excess oranges in it, because oranges and chocolate are very good, and. I'm sure you'll like it. So, for the moment of truth, trying this. Um, can you see it? There we go, now it's in frame. Um, here it goes. That is very good. I uh, definitely approve. I think Hannibal Lecter would approve of this. And it's not what we all want in life, all we want is Hannibal Lecter's approval. At least I do. Yeah, so um, this makes four servings. Divide your ingredients accordingly if you're making it for yourself or maybe two people. Um, the website that I got the recipe from, once again, link in the description, also has all of the recipe division things. Um, where it'll tell you exactly what you need for the amount of people you're going to be serving. There are four people in my house, so 
Also, just for evenness sake, I did four because so I'd have all the even amounts of oranges. Um, but I hope you enjoyed making this. I know I did. And um, if you want to share your meals with me, tag me on TikTok. Same username is here, Barenth. I make a lot of Hannibal content there currently. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely share your meals with me. Um, but that's it. I'm out.